Ray is making us some French toast to go with the maple syrup we brought from Ohio on this beautiful rocket heater. Check it out. This is titanium, by it's the way. A, it's a stainless. it's a turbo from a big engine with a screen at the bottom of it, and check, check. Oh, the flame went out. you drop some wood in there and light it and. And the uh, the ashes fall down into this little cup down at the bottom here. But we were having a conversation before about this tapered flue that Ray uses on everything. Uh, and uh, it does a percentage better, maybe not a lot. Right. On what you want to try to do, like the one out there. It also has a, a, an effect where if you have a, a rocket stove, it looks like it's... Well, we, remember how a water window was set? I made her smaller at the top yep. to make her look small, taller. Taller, yes. So it, it makes those guys look taller. Well, so in masonry heaters, there's a reduction with every run of about 5% to give you a, a smaller uh, uh, run smaller uh, um, tube inside so that the pressure is so more consistent. It's bottlenecking? It's, like, it's bottlenecking on purpose. Uh, the, uh, the way that draft works in a chimney is that the gases, that hot gases um, are bigger and they want to expand. And since they can only expand up it creates an upward thrust. It, it, it does, it goes faster. And, um, but the thing is that it's actually cooler up here than it is down here. You can see the color in the stainless. So because it's cooler up there, that actually slows down the weight of that, that cooler gas slows the chimney down, uh, but the, the, the gas is actually smaller. So it wants to like congregate there, I guess. So if you shrink the tube, then the gas um, shrinking remains the same pressure or closer to the same pressure as the lower stuff. So the chimney works a little bit better with a gradual uh, shrinkage. Um, and we've been doing that with rocket heaters where we, uh, where we'll just go down to, from an eight to a six to a four as the, as, as the gas is cooling, as it's heating the room, it's cooling the gas. And, but Ray's been doing that all along here with his rockets, making these things, uh, um, skinnier as they go up, making the taper to help keep the pressure. So it's cool to actually see that built in rather than. You know, because when we do it with, with, because we're lazy, we do it with regular stovepipe, and we just use a reducer, which causes friction. Um, and whereas this is a lot smoother of a transition. You just, you just weld it. It looks like you welded it on the side. I, I, ha I have a, a brake that actually rolls this. So as, as I, I, I turn it, it rolls to make it. You know, this was a piece of flat sheet metal. Uh huh. And, and so I, I made it fit to that. And and then I spot welded it and then did a better weld. You know, you could actually have little holes in it because the fire is not going to go in for a little hole. You could actually have a one inch hole here, it won't affect it at all, as you know. It's just, it's how the draft falls. So, this little turbo that you've done here, uh, you've fed it, put in here, it feeds the fire air. And, but the air kind of is able to heat up, heat up a little bit as it goes around before it gets right in the middle. But it also gets that air spinning. Yes, it does. It makes a little fire tornado, uh, which makes it stay, that has the heat. You see, anytime you have a tornado, it, it keeps the heat uh, in that area longer. So there's not as much, there's, there's more turbulence, but it's a designer turbulence. Air and water want to make a spiral. That's what it wants to go to. So if you have something that's like a square box, it wouldn't be as good. The only thing this doesn't have is insulation. If it had yeah. insulation, it'd be a whole different animal. Uh, Just put it in a box of perlite or something, no? Well, the, the thing is, it's, I don't want to, I mean, I could use it in California and 
I don't know why it's not starting to fry right now. I'm feeling it over here, definitely. You feel the heat? I'm feeling the heat. Well, maybe I need to put some mesquite in the heat. Mesquite is going to add heat. A lot of heat. But yeah, it's spinning that uh, little fire right, tornado. Could you, could you give me the phone for a second? Helps it. You want to check out the, the little tornado? Helps it mix that fuel. Oh yeah. Like let me let me just show you a little bit of uh, went out. Nope, nope. Oh, by the way, have I ever shown you the Spanish galleon? Oh wow! Oh wow! That's cool. You're getting smoke in your face, so don't. Worry. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm I looking at something it. I do called the Spanish Galleon. That was awesome. I do with that rocket stove over there. Okay. And what I do is I put a, a, a page of a newspaper. Did I ever show you the Spanish Galleon? Uh, you showed me flipping the newspaper up into the in the as a big ball of fire in the in the okay. Joshua what tree. What happens? It it, it it starts to create a uh, uh, it starts to block the fire and the heat, and it starts to whistle. It goes. And then, it, then it, it pops up. It turns into a Spanish galleon that starts to spin around, and then it falls back into the entrance of the uh, rocket stove. Huh. I've done that maybe ten times. It's worked. It's pretty out there. The Spanish galleon, I call. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna check this out. Rocket stove like this. Oh. You got to keep the fire going. I don't know why this is not. It's probably uh, stuffed with ash. Look at the that spiral. Isn't that badass? Do that in slow motion. I call it slow mo. Yeah. Yeah, man, is it is it amazing? That's a lovely spiral. That's everyone I make now makes biochar. It has a spiral and a tapered 